Hi again, Greg Bell, the News Tribune here at Lumen Field. They're already turning it into a Sounders playoff pitch for tomorrow night's playoff game they have here. What did we learn about this one? The Seahawks, retro Seahawks, going kingdom style and turning up the heat late in the game, rallying past Cleveland. Well, they really won despite themselves on offense. I really think these, well, this, first of all, this is the type of game they're going to have to beat San Francisco to win the NFC West. A physical line of scrimmage, defense, run first mentality that Cleveland had. That's what San Francisco does. And this is a physicality test today that the Seahawks mostly passed on defense and really mostly failed on offense. Kenneth Walker had three carries in the game's first six plays, had a 17 yard run to help get the Seahawks down to this end zone for their first touchdown. And then he had only three carries into the fourth quarter after that. They just didn't, he had seven carries for the game and three of them came in the first six plays. Once again, Shane Waldron just deserting the run game. And we hear every week, every week for years that Pete Carroll wants to run the ball. We have to run the ball more, we have to stick with it. And after the game today, Carroll said, it's there, meaning the run game and the effectiveness. We just got to get to it. Well, he's the head coach, and he can tell the play caller at the beginning of the series, run the ball. But running the ball really, really, really helps Geno Smith. And when they don't run the ball, Geno Smith becomes more prone to mistakes. I really think that's a root cause of the six turnovers in the last three games that Geno Smith has had, including two interceptions today one of which was just a free play. The defensive tackle makes a great play to bat it up in the air to himself, diving interception. But let's face it, this offense is one dimensional right now when you only have Kenneth Walker with seven carries and three of them in, in the first six plays of the game. Zach Charbonnet sparks the drive late in the game with his running and they barely run him in the whole game. They gotta have more than 13 carries by their running backs for an entire game. That is as physical and line of scrimmage as this one was and as San Francisco is going to bring to them starting on Thanksgiving night here and then again 16 days later in December in Santa Clara. Yes, they're in first place. Why? It's because their defense just keeps creating opportunities. <laughs> the soccer headbutt interception Jamal Adams created on the blitz was a really, really good blitz by Adams. He didn't blitz much today. I watched him quite a bit through the binoculars and they had him playing back. There was one series in the second quarter that he didn't play at all actually and was wearing a stocking cap making some fans wonder if he was injured. But no, Pete Carroll said that was a planned rest for him and a pitch, something of a pitch down. But then on the blitz, the tackle slid out and picked him up. And Adams had to make a decision on where to go. And he picked a lane that was inside that tackle that got around him right into P.J. Walker's passing lane. And then by the time Adams jumps up, it hits him in the head. He said he wasn't trying to hit the ball with his helmet, but his jump made it come that. A huge carom down the field that Julian Love said he could not believe was up in the air that long. Greek Woolen said he thought it was like a movie. It was in slow motion. That interception sparked the drive for the winning touchdown by Geno Smith. Smith had been 19 for 31 before that drive. Boom, boom, boom. Hits the first three passes of the two-minute drill. Tyler Lockett for seven. DK Metcalf for nine. And then Noah Fan for big 17, 21-yard game, excuse me, to get into the red zone. The touchdown play. That was what Smith and Jigba didn't do earlier in the game on the interception, first interception by Geno Smith. On the first interception, Smith and Jigba didn't adjust his route the way Smith thought he was going to on third down. Throws outside, nobody but the cornerback is there, intercepted. On the touchdown play, there was a slot corner blitz. Smith and Jigba read it. Smith, had, the quarterback had to make, had to rely on Smith and Jigba to read it for the hitch route that really was a bubble screen. The screener, the blocker outside was DK Metcalf. And for all the things we talk about Metcalf, his fines, his unsportsmanlike penalties, his catches, how many targets is he getting? It's a block that wins the game today. Outside after the catch, Smith and Jigba told me he knew that he was probably heading outside because DK Metcalf was out there to block and he was turning his guy in, the corner outside right, and the offense was left. I talked to him. Metcalf at his locker, and he. I asked him, do you take extra pride in winning the game on a block with all the attention you get for all the other things, penalties and catches and the like? And he says, you know what? I'm not looking for outside validation outside this locker room. That's my job, to make that play. When the ball's not coming to me and it's coming right behind me, that's my job, to make that block. And he, Metcalf, said he knew after Smith and Jibber caught the pass that his block could 
potentially win the game, and it did. Sent the Jigba Rim behind Metcalf, touchdown. Seahawks won a game that they spent most of the afternoon probably not deserving to win after they had taken a 14-0 lead. So that's how they give up 20 of the game's 23 points and still win. 24-20 over the Browns. They're now 5-2. Looky here, the 49ers lost for the third straight time. Brock Purdy has come down to earth. The 49ers lost at home to Cincinnati. They are 5-3 after a 5-0 start. The Seahawks head to Baltimore next week, 5-2, and, and in first place in the West. All my coverage is at thenewstribune.com and on Twitter at GBellSeattle as always. Thank you for watching and happy Halloween.